see, I guess. Who knows? Maybe it might be perfect in the deck. Um, but uh, at least it's superficially perfect in a blink deck to have a blink. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, at least to some degree, it's got to be. So uh, Nathan, there on the right, is playing Birds of Paradise, Land War Elves, Strangle Root Geist, Huntmaster of the Fells. Okay, typical stuff. Phantasmal Image, Consecrated Sphinx, one Snapcaster Mage, that's 22 creatures. Uh, he's got Vapor Snag. He's got Naturalize. He's got one copy of Mana Leak. He's got Ponder, and he's got Sword of Feast and Famine. So, kind of a typical rug build. What I like, he's got some Planeswalkers in here. He's got Garrick Relentless, Jace Memory Adept, and one Tamiyo, also Memory Adept, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Uh... <laughs> That's not the Tam Wrong Tamiyo. I don't not think she's tamio. a Memory Adept. <laughs> Jace the Moon Sage. Chase the Moon Sage and Tamio Memory Adept. Tamio the Mind Sculptor. Uh, I think. I Tamio think the Mind Sculptor is so good. It costs, can, it costs like three mana. <laughs> we can give him a pass on that. Uh, on that, since there is only one Tamio. But uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't think it's a big deal. Uh, I'm, I'm really interested in this, this blue-white blink deck. Yeah, me too. I'm really I excited to watch this match. Uh, I really don't like the cloud shift at all. Why do you, don't you like it? You feel like it's just already... Well, it's just so bad. It's like, um, like if you're blinking a Restoration Angel, it doesn't really do much. Uh, blinking a Stonehorn Dignitary is just a fog. One mana fog, which is never really the best thing. Blinking a Blade Splicer, you get a 3-3 three, three for one mana, but it's already it's after turn three because you already must have cast a Blade yeah. Splicer. And Blinking Spellscatter Merfolk Looter is not that good. I mean, it's just... I momentary think... Blink like really had to work hard to be playable and have flashback. Right. Um, and he kind of gives it flashback with the Snapcaster Mages. Like, the, that is pseudo-flashback. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to stretch it here. I understand what you're saying. Like, he does, it doesn't have a lot... Really, I think it's all based around Stonehorn Dignitary and blinking it until you can get the Venser Dignitary lock. You know, I think his deck is is just meant to. Yeah, I feel like to it, go for that. If you wanted to build this at home, guys, I would uh, probably cut the Cloud Shifts and the Snapcaster Mages. I think the Snapcaster Mages uh, require a lot of work here and don't really accomplish that much. They're in a lot of ways just like Phyrexian Ragers here, mm -hmm. right? Um, they're Phyrexian Ragers that are difficult on your mana. And then I would replace those with copies of Lingering Souls and probably some Gideon Juris. Okay. I like it. What's happening, Jesse? Are we good? Uh, lost connection. Oh. We're having some internet issues. But right. we are good here. Uh, good to go now. So. Stonehorn Dignitary Lock. I was uh, promoting this recently, saying that the format was really soft to it. Let's see how soft the format is to a Stonehorn Dignitary lock. Now, something interesting about Stonehorn Dignitary, uh, if I'm understanding this correctly, that's that ability stacks, right? It's target opponent skips his or her next combat phase. So yeah, he yeah. could blink it like three times in a turn and have them, you know, like he could play it, blink it, flashback, blink it. That's three combat phases that Nathan just can't can't do. Like he can do it all in one turn, which uh, which gives him plenty of time. He doesn't have to cast any of those spells on the subsequent turns to, to kind of keep the lock up. Uh, and, you know, he could dig into a Venser on one of those turns and then, then it's all over. But the crying, as Adrian Sullivan would say. <laughs> <laughs> the internet is absolutely abysmal here. <laughs> I can't yeah, even look up cards. We do not have cards. strong internet. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, I'm not even, I'm using magiccards.info because it's the, about the, uh, the least... Apparently, they, that's, they're still having internet issues. Yeah, I think... Uh, MagicCards.info is like the least like data-intensive site. It's like almost all text except for one one image, you know, the card image. And I can't I can't even get the card image to start loading. Yeah, know? I mean, it's as, long like, as, it's fine. as long as we have the text, it's good. I'll be okay. Yeah, it's just funny to me that... Uh, all right, uh, pop quiz to all those at home. It did not escape the ambassador's... Notice? <laughs> did okay, you, did, did you not escape the ambassador's notice that the sound of war drums could also marshal the city to attention. What is that the flavor text of? Tweet to us. And the internet's not great, so we might not even know, but... <laughs> I'm checking Twitter now, actually. Um, 
Mike Zappi says, Crater Hoof. Hemoth it's, makes it's, craters it's, with its hooves because yeah. it's so big. That's ridiculous. If it made, like the flavor text says about lakes, you know. I mean, if there were a lot of them, wouldn't just uh, the it world... Would all, it would just even out. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. Turn one, Island Gitaxian and Probe. We've got Forest Forest, Sword of Peace and Famine, Stranglewood, Geist, Manalik, Consecrated. Island, uh, yeah, me too. Consecrated Sphinx there. So, Pretty bad hand from Nathan. His mana's horrific there. Yeah, he's, he can get the strangle root geist. That's about his. That's about the best thing he could do at this point. Um, needs another land to cast the sword. Needs he a blue source to cast the mana. It's gonna be pretty good if he can draw a blue source. And uh, Ken draws an island off the probe. And so we've got forest. Passes the turn back to Ken. Ken untaps, plays Glacial Fortress. Passes back to Nathan. Nathan draws. Plays Forest. Tap two. Strangle Root Geist. No new information for us. Strangle Root Geist gets in for two. Yep. Ken gonna drop to 18 here. Ken draws what looked like pacifism, but is not. What is is that on Cloud Shift? I think it is. Uh, I think it's a foil cloud shift. I think it is too. And uh, a more. Maybe a point. restoration angel? I think it was a cloud shift, but yeah, you could be, you could be right. Uh, and double strangle root guys. We did not know that Nathan had drawn another one. Yeah. And he's uh, he's able That's to pretty good. put a lot of pressure on here. And there's his uh, his third land, Evolving Wild. So he'll be able to get a blue. Uh, he'll be able to get an island and have a blue source. All right. Ooh, and a Stonehorn Dignitary for Ken. That's Ken goes with the Stonehorn awesome. Dignitary. And... Put in the brakes on those strangle root geists. It's a big game. <laughs> it is a big game. <laughs> Island for Nathan off of the Evolving Wilds. Ken looks like LSV's understudy. I was kind of thinking that earlier too. I was like, he, that guy looks like LSV, but he's wearing a Star City shirt. <laughs> so that's how I know it's not LSV. <laughs> Brian Kuhn says that Stonehorn Dignitary is uh, the card we were talking about before, and he would be correct. Stoner Tignitary on the table now. All right, so a ponder from Nathan off of the Fresh Island. And, Very uh, risky ponder. I mean, that makes him not have Mental League open. I think at this point he must be desperate. Does Ken have Venser? Because if he can go land Venser... And that'll be it. That, that'll be it, yeah. And I don't think Nathan's got an alternate. I mean, Nathan's got... Planeswalkers. planeswalkers that he can win. Those are his alternate win condition. But, I mean, there's no way his Planeswalkers can race Venser getting to ultimate. Yeah. While it's, it's putting up. <laughs> it's not having that. Okay, so he does have an Venter. island. Does, and goes with uh, Bird of Paradise. And why does, he get, why does he have two islands tapped? He cast a bird. Where's that? The other island, the one island came into play tapped from the... Uh, Oh. No, no, no. That's, that's right. Okay. That's what uh, I was confused. I was like, what did he, he cast a ponder and a bird. There shouldn't be any other. Uh, Where did the from. next island come from? Hold on. He, uh, he, he just played it. He play, this put is the island. turn. Right. That's right. He had, th he had, uh, far as far as evolving wilds. Another island. Oh, he just okay. drew another island after, uh, after getting one off the evolving wilds. So, well, Nathan, okay. ha um, uh, so yeah, Nathan added bird to the board, passed back. Ken did have a land, so he's got five mana. I assume he doesn't have the Venser, or else, oh yeah, he would have played it. So, he apparently passed back. Nathan, uh, Nathan untaps and swings in with his Geists. One gets blocked by the Stonehorn Dignitary and comes back a little bit bigger. One gets in for two. Nathan. Ooh, the, the sort of old post-combat sort of feast and famine. Yeah, yeah, so I imagine Ken is going to end step. Oh no. So Venser or not, Nathan has a mana leak available. So he's going to have to play around it, and it appears that's what he's going for. So three mana for an O-ring on the sword, and that resolves. Well, O-ring resolves, then targets the sword. Let me uh. In multiple cloud yeah, shifts in that. Ken's hand. These kind of just fogs. Yeah, I mean, I think that's fine. All right, phantasmal image, copying the uh, the big strangle root geist, or copying the strangle root geist. Yep, coming in and... for seven now. And I think Ken just you know blocks the big one. 
and then uh, takes the four. He's in no rush. No, choose to take five instead. Just yeah, I mean, seven. it's a little dangerous there. I mean, you lose to another clone effect in the next turn if you're unable to resolve like your cloud shifts. Well, if he blocked the the big one there, dignitary would have died, unless he cloud shift just to just to get it, you know, just to save it. But that wouldn't uh, that wouldn't kill the geist in that case. Kent knows Nathan has a mana leak in hand, so he can't go for the Venser this turn. Does he have the Venser? I can't keep. He it just away. top decked it. Oh, okay, okay. So All right, so he passes to back. Pass the turn. I think he's going to have to start the, the cloud shift action here. And what was it? Is that was that Restoration Angel or was it? I think cloud it shift? is Restoration yeah, Angel. It looks yep. like. Yeah, it's the Angel. I'm trying to get used to the new artwork here. So, Angel comes in, blinks the dignitary, makes Nathan skip his combat step here. His combat phase. I kind of like the end step Restoration Angel there. Yep, and a Consecrated Sphinx. Now, it may seem like, oh no, Consecrated Sphinx is about to take this game over, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, because Nathan just tapped out for Consecrated Sphinx, which is going to give Ken the opening he wanted for Venser. Yep. Venser the Sojourner comes down, and I assume he's going to blink that there Stonehorn Dignitary. If you guys want to read about uh, this type of strategy more, you can go to dailymtg.com and uh, check out my column from... Not this week, but the week before. Building on a budget. Yeah, I believe the name of the column is Restoration Hardware. Now, I mean, this is it's, this is a lock. I mean, Nathan can attack. Uh, Nathan needs to find some sort of answer. Okay, so he's got Garrick. Garrick can... Can't do anything. It can make walls. Yeah, I'm... At this point, Ken can't really kill Nathan either, but... Well, Venser lock is gonna... Venser, uh... We'll, we'll do it. In due time. I was trying to think of a way that... Garrick could fight the dignitary, but it's just not going to do anything. Venser blinks the dignitary yet again. Yeah, making sure that uh, it's actually exiled until the end of turn. And end of turn comes back into play. Nathan skips his next combat step. Phase. Keep doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Whole phase goes away. Yeah. It's gotta be weird for Nathan. He's like, I'm drawing so many more cards than my opponent. It does not matter at all. Can I get a storm bind? <laughs> yeah. Why am I not playing any burn spells? So Venser now has nine counters on him, is that right? So he can, he can ultimate. Right, because he came in with five, right? So uh, he, he comes he, in with three and then goes up to five. It says five. Or is that, oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the... I need to convert a casting cost. Okay, yeah, that's what that, I just can't see the, the image, so. Okay. All right, well, Venser lock took care of it. Yeah, it is three. Why is that not in the text part? That's kind of unfortunate. Yeah, that is a little... That's why. I, that's what I assumed it was. Yeah, you know, Vents are a much easier card to acquire these days. Um, in recently the printed decks. in the Venser vs. Cop dual deck. I prefer the Scars of Mirrodin artwork by uh, Eric Deschamps. Also, yeah. Eric Deschamps is a frequent uh, artist who on the Open series who shows up a lot of different events for, on the Star City uh, Star City circuit. That is, All right, uh, so let's see what's going on here in this game. Nathan, Ken what can is, Nathan uh, do? He can, he's got Karn. Karn can, Karn can fight a uh, Venture pretty well. Yeah, post board, I mean. Um, 
I'm trying to look at ways that he can deal with that lock. He's going to negate. Yeah, the negate Karn. will help. Uh, An extra mana leak. Zealous conscripts. <laughs> they do a pretty good job. But that's about it, really. Like, he doesn't have much other, you know, he's got like Batter Skull, but if you can't attack, Batter Skull is not, it's, it's just worthless. Um, yeah, there's, and uh, I think post board this matchup becomes pretty bad for Ken. Yeah? Yeah. So you you think Nathan's the, just those just the Karn the extra mana leak the, and then the gate and the conscripts are enough for uh, for Nathan to I think the Zell's conscripts are the only thing that matters. Yeah, I think uh, there is it is very very difficult for Ken Ken's deck to beat any number of Zell's conscripts post board. I mean, maybe that's what the cloud shifts are for. Cloud Shift does a pretty good job of blinking it to uh, to blinking the monster to save to, it. Well, oh, it you're can saying only, can you're only saying blink creature, creatures. Cloud. Oh, I was thinking about blinking. I thought you were talking about Zealous Conscripts. Oh no, Zeal Zealous Conscripts the, uh, is going to steal Venser the I turn see. before okay. ultimates and then I ultimate. See. Yeah. Yeah, Zealous Conscripts is kind of absurd. I keep forgetting uh, that also it's that card is a dollar yeah. and seventy cents, or like three dollars or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah so Cloud Shift, Cloud is, just Shift is just a creature, right? So, I was thinking about the Stonehorn Dignitary. Like, I'm I keep thinking Conscripts just steals creatures. I don't keep forgetting. Uh, I, no, it that card, permanence. that card's very good. No, remember, like when you have a Zealous Conscripts in your hand, it is impossible to be ultimated by a Planeswalker, especially if you have a Cavern of Souls in play. Yeah, so does that is Ken actually have, impossible. Does Ken have a way to deal with a? Uh, I mean, sp Spellskite. Spellskite. Spell That's his Spell Zealous Conscripts or, answer. Uh, he could just, but I mean, besides countering it with something like Mana Leak, or he has no Mana Leaks main. Does he have any? No, he has no Mana Leaks at all. Uh, he gets two dissipates. Yeah, he's got to try to get this. Uh, like he's got to keep plusing the Venser, so it's going to get high enough to ultimate at some point. And when it does, um, Nathan's just going to steal it and ultimate him. You can't beat a Venser emblem. Nobody can. That's I mean, unless you're like already winning, like they're like dead next turn. Venser emblems, so much, so much power. Every single card you cast, exiles a permanent. I already forgot what I was, I was about to look something up and I don't remember what it was. <laughs> All right, and we're already in game two. Nathan uh, with the triple NOR elf draw against Ken with that pretty Mirage basic island and a Glacial Fortress, gonna play a Merfolk looter. Card I've been talking about quite a bit. And Garrick, the Relentless, comes down. He's going to kill this Merfolk looter. And flips to the dark side. And Garrick, the Veiled Curse now. On the table. Ready to make a bunch of evil wolves. Ken with no play. And uh, Nathan. They're going to get in three. there for three. Those Ken spirit tokens 17. look just like Llanowar Elves. It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, look at this dark wolf. Yeah, Nathan puts a dire wolf into play. I imagine that would be my uh, that would be my fighter pilot name if I was a fighter pilot. Dark, dark wolf. wolf. Yeah. It's kind of cool. <laughs> so Stonehorn Dignitary for Ken appears to have resolved through Nathan's handful of counter spells that I'm fabricating. <laughs> and uh, looks like we're having a little uh, little tutoring action here. Nathan sacrifices a wolf and gets a uh, bird of paradise instead. And uh, that's fine. And he casts the bird. Eric Deschamps, also the artist for uh, Garrick Relentless and Garrick the Veil Cursed. I think that, uh, I don't know, do you sacrifice the wolf there or do you sacrifice Llanowar Elves? 
I don't know. I'm fine with the wolf. Like, Lanowar Elves cost one, like your other two Lanowar Elves do, and like the bird you're going to get, so it just opens yourself up to getting like, really blown out by a Ratchet Bomb. Yeah, that's true. But I think, uh, and I think Nathan may have wanted the mana. You know, like, I think he obviously he's getting birds. He seems like he just wants mana, but. Well, he wants blue mana. Yeah. And that was the issue, because now he's got like access to eight, and there's no way he needs eight. Yeah, that's true. So Stonehorn Dignitary. He also puts more guys in his graveyard for Gark the Veiled Curse Ultimate. Oh, right, right, Which right. I think uh, overruns for the amount of guys that are in your graveyard. Yeah, that's a good Very point. Very powerful effect. Interesting, yeah. Um, so yeah, Venser, Venser Dignitary lock is on board for Ken, and uh, Nathan now has a very short window to deal with it. So Venser on five counters currently can go up to seven here. Well, unfortunately, uh, Nathan forgot to use that Gark the Veiled Curse. Nice turn. Yeah, he didn't do very much, he just pondered. And uh, Ken now pondering himself. Ken needs to be uh, afraid of that Zealous Conscripts, as you mentioned. Um, yeah, that can, that can just steal this game away from him. All right, so the length of Dignitary, Nathan. Untap, draw, play a Hinterland Harbor. Garrick now gonna continue making some guys. Yeah, make a wolf. And Dark passes wolf. back to Ken. Ken, uh, Ken has, I believe, Gataxian probe, maybe, just drew. That's what it looked like to me, also. Yeah, I think we're going to see a probe here, and then we're going to see if Nathan has the conscripts. I like these Mirage basic lands a lot. It's the, the palm tree island, one of my yeah, favorite are, islands ever made. Yeah, those are some nice ones. You don't see those as often. And I believe that's the plains with the zebra on it. Uh, yeah, I think so. It is. So, it looks like Venser, yeah, Venser blinked the Dignitary, and now Ken goes with Gitaxian Probe um, to show, is that a Zealous Conscript? It is. I believe it is. And in the gate. Conspicuously underneath that, that island. island. Yeah. Now, Ken made a little bit of a boo-boo here. Because he, he, he pumped the Venser, the Venser before... before and he ended up just getting a, a jail free card. He drew a negate off the top of the stack with a taxi. Improv. Nathan has a negate. Ooh, Nathan has a negate too? I believe so. So oh, we can okay. conscripts so. and then negate the counter spell. So we may see the Venser ultimate on the opposite side of the table. Yep. And that's what's going to happen. Yeah, so. That's exactly uh, what I was talking about. Yeah, Ken having a negate doesn't help counter the conscripts anyway. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I just Conscripts is like, a creature. It doesn't matter. Ken may just concede here. Zealous I would. I would see what he takes, because, you know, maybe he just takes it. Maybe he's thinking like I was thinking. I have to take a creature. I mean, maybe. No, okay, I'm going to take your Venser, and I'm going to ultimate it. Yeah. Put it on one. I would I like a, a Venser ultimate. Emblem. I'll play a Bird of Paradise, and I'll exile your Venser. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Zealous Conscripts. Yeah, Zealous Concert was welcome to stealing, the new standard. Yeah, stealing the fun out of this entire game. I guess I think actually it's pretty fun. I think it put yeah. lots of fun into this game. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, you I know think what breaking up Stonehorn Dignitary Venserlock is fun. No, <laughs> I think see, putting together Stonehorn Dignitary Venserlock is the unfun. I think, all right, so Ken uh, casts Restoration Angel and blinks the Stonehorn Dignitary. He's still in this game, but no, see, I, I'm looking at it going, Ken has this really awesome deck. This really cool strategy that we don't see ever, and then this new card that print, that's printed is just gonna wreck it, so nobody's gonna play yeah. it. You know, that's the way, I, you, you took the fun out of it that way. And it's actually quite funny, because two weeks ago I wrote this Restoration Hardware article and talked about how soft the format was to Venser, Stonehorn, Dignitary Lock. This week I wrote about a deck that played Zealous Conscripts and talked about how <laughs> Planeswalkers were a dangerous liability in the format yeah. because Zealous Godscript is around. Jeez, Jacob Van Lunen, stop predicting the future. So, Look at this. This uh, whole match is just this match is about like a timeline of building on a budget. Yeah, so Snapcaster <laughs> resolved. Ponder was negated. The, the Ponder that apparently was attempted to be flashed back there. Uh, Nathan hit a negate on that. and um, Did he exile something with the negate? Uh, he ne exiled the Restoration Angel. Okay. So now... What was he... Did he cast a, a new ponder? Is that... I didn't see another ponder. I'm, like, confused about I'm what's confused, too. Right he keeps looking at the top few cards of his library, and... He must have cast another ponder. Yeah. It's 
So a whole lot of pondering happening, and uh, Ken now, I hope they're keeping track of how many uh, triggers of Stonehorn Dignitary there have been. I guess I guess it's just one. Like, I think he could... <clears throat> does he have one for this turn? I don't know if he I does. I don't know if he has one for this turn yet. I know he played the Restoration Angel, but it may have been... I'm actually somewhat surprised that Nathan hasn't just exiled the Stonehorn Dignitary at this point. Yeah, think about it. Ken blinked the Dignitary the one turn. So that was for Nathan's last turn when he cast the Conscripts. And then at the end of Nathan's turn played the Restoration Angel. So he, so they have another... So he can't attack this turn. Because the Restoration Angel... This is the Restoration Angel's uh, turn, I guess. Okay. So Nathan can attack. But there's no more after that. Phantasmal Image. Copy the Dignitary. I'm surprised he didn't copy Snapcaster Mage. Oh, no, no, no. What is he, oh, what is he copying? He's exiling the Dignitary. Yeah. Copying and Snapcaster. Copying conscripts. Stealing Snapcaster. No, wait. Is he stealing anything? No, oh, he still stole it and did nothing with it because there's no reason to. I thought it was odd. I mean, I guess he just wanted to exile the... Uh, well, if he copies Snapcaster, then he can flash back a Ponder and exile something, right? Did, yeah, but I don't think he did that. Yeah, he didn't do that. All right, so Ken with a second Stonehorn Dignitary and a Merfolk Looter added to his side of the board. Nathan still locked out of combat phases, but Nathan still, I think, has this game. Uh, his board is just so ridiculous that eventually Ken's not going to be able to keep... Not only is his board ridiculous, but his emblem is ridiculous. So Yes. <laughs> uh, it's the thing about the, the active Garrick. Yeah, he Ken... Can just so Ken's going to pack this one in. And now that's exactly what happened in Zell's Conscripts. <laughs> yeah. Why is Ken going to lose? Nathan has some number of Zell's Conscripts in his deck. You know, we still have another Yeah, because that was... Alright, so going to game three. Now... Ken Burl's probably looking at a sideboard and he's thinking to himself, well, I'm going to need a way now to deal with this Zealous Cow's Curse problem. What can I do? And he's going to be looking at Dissipate and an extra copy of Spellskite. So he's going to want to have a Spellskite in play before he gets Venser into the realm of ultimate mode. Yeah. Um, he was definitely then, not when thinking Zealous Conscripts. Or if he yeah. was, to, to pump the, uh, you know, to plus the Venser before Gitaxi and Probe was uh, definitely a problem, whether or not he was thinking of the conscripts. But yeah, that was... Man, uh, I'm sure as soon as he casted the Gitaxi and Probe, he realized that, that he had made a mistake. He saw all the writing on the wall right there. <laughs> or maybe he oh. didn't realize it right away because Nathan had the Zealous Conscripts underneath the island. Maybe he saw Zealous Conscripts and thought the same thing I did. It was like, oh, it's like active aggression, right? I mean, so he's going to steal my dignitary, maybe? That's not so bad. Oh, it could be worse. Yeah. Well, it could not be worse. It's, yeah. It actually so could you, not be to worse. Ultimate, to yeah. have your Planeswalker, ulti Planeswalker ultimated, I mean, that's just great, right? Yeah. Except when your opponent does it. <laughs> when your opponent <laughs> ultimates your Venser. I don't think it gets worse. Yeah, I, think, I mean, I what, what would you rather range, have? Right? Would you rather have your opponent ultimate your Venser or them cast a Cruel Ultimatum, resolve a Cruel Ultimatum against you? Which one would you rather happen? I'd rather the Cruel Ultimatum. I'd, I'd rather get Cruel, cruel Ultimatums. Ultimatums. I'd live Venser Ultimated. I've fought through Cruel Ultimatums before. I don't know that you can really do much unless your opponent just completely bricks every turn and just rolls land, 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 land <laughs> and can't cast a spell, which I guess is possible. Uh, you know, I almost lost a game where I ultimated a Venser, but then I drew three spells in a row. Yeah. It's just, and sometimes and Alex spells Mertini draw complained spells. so much about it. It's like, man, it's limited. You got a Venser, and I was like, whatever. <laughs> so anyway, we got a. Uh, Ken negated his negate. Was that? Oh, Ken negated his own negate. Okay, sorry. Um, the answer is greatly improved. Sorry. Yeah. So there was that flurry of spells that uh, that was happening. With yeah. the ponders and things, apparently, maybe one of the negates. Yeah, no, I think uh, Ken actually negated Nathan's negate. Um, yeah, but, that's what I But Nathan saying. got, and that's why his, one of his ponders got to resolve there, the first one. But Nathan's negate also exiled a permanent. Yeah. Because of uh, Venser Emblem. Venser yeah. Emblem is completely OP. It's ridiculous because it's just, it's like. 
cast a spell, exile a permanent. Oh, also the spell probably does something too. <laughs> yeah, you cast. Oh, I also get this, this, oh, it was a counter spell. How about that? Really, I just wanted to exile, <laughs> exile your thing, you know? It's like, thanks for casting something so I could cast this negate and exile, <laughs> exile something. Pretty good. Hey, it's Adrian Sullivan. Yeah. What's your record, Adrian? 1-1? One, one. Okay. He's keeping it balanced here. Uh, Adrian Sullivan at 1-1. One one. Gonna have to uh, battle his way up. Literal eight lands in a row first match. Okay. Rad. Mana flooded in the first match. Got a bit flooded in this one match. All right, so Nathan Lisko. I like Nathan Lisko's deck a lot. I think yeah, it's pretty I like, awesome. I like both of these decks. It's actually a really exciting kind of match here. I'm, I'm, yeah. uh, I'm liking it. I just... Uh, I'm zealous. Cronscripts now makes me sad because you see, like, I think this is a cool list. I think Venser has not really shined, and he's going to rotate in the fall. Is he ever going to see the light of day? Here's a list that really is great with him, and maybe it could be a thing. And then you have something like zealous conscripts. It's like, oh, come on. So, uh, but maybe maybe we need that kind of thing in the format. Maybe Ken's deck is is the next. Delver, or even worse, you know, the next Callblade, but with Zealous Conscripts, it, it makes it so it's not. You know, it makes it just a yeah. contender. You never know. Perhaps, uh, there's, there's got to be another way to deal with Zealous Conscripts. Yeah, I mean, counter spells, spell skites, but we've already... Well, the problem is, counter spells are... Cavern of Souls. There's, yeah, I, I think Red White Humans is going to be a deck that, uh, we start seeing a little more of. We haven't seen any of it today, but we've only this is only the second match we've watched. But yeah, that, that card is. I mean, that deck is really really. That top aided last week, right? It, six, it came yeah. in six, I think. Uh, Do you know what's really good? Hero of Bladehold that can have haste and cannot be countered. Sounds good. Sounds pretty yeah. good. Was it the, the Hero light, Blade Hold lightning? Haste uh, is so good, yeah. Lightning Muller. I didn't think Lightning Muller was very good. When I previewed it, I wasn't very sure of the card, mm -hmm. but I was not thinking about Hero Blade Hold, and I certainly wasn't thinking that there was going to be another Red White Land after they just gave us Red White Lands. Oh right. So, yeah. I, I there's no way I made the connection that Lightning Mauler and Hero Blade Hold were going to be uh, going to be good buddies. But uh, yeah, Lightning Mauler and Hero Blade Hold, they hang out. They have so much fun together. All right, so a turn one Jataxian Pro from Ken Burrell reveals a uh, decent hand from Nathan Lisko here. Nathan leading things off in the line or else. Matt Itell uh, mentioned about half an hour ago that uh, Zealous Conscript plus Cloud Shift equals free creature with haste permanently. Because you, you just blink the guy you stole and it comes back into play under your control, and now it's not the one you need to give back. Pretty True. interesting combo. So, Six uh, manas. It's a lot, too. Yeah. Lenor Else. Uh, gets tapped to make a Lenor Else, and Nathan, uh, interesting choice there to not attack for one, to instead uh, yeah. leave open that mana. Yeah, Perhaps he... Uh, I don't know. I'm drawing a blank here. Because any, any one mana removal spell doesn't really do anything against Ken's deck, right? Right. I'm not sure what he uh, why he kept that open either. He can't ponder. He can't vapor snag. Like, what can he even cast for one mana? There's nothing that he can cast for one mana that's not blue. Am I missing something? Yeah, there's nothing in his deck he can cast for that mana. So that was odd. Yeah, he could have... Seems to me that he could have attacked for one there and and, yeah, and, and who knows that may make a difference. Yeah. I've had games where I've missed a point of damage, where I've ended the game with my opponent at one life, and it's a bad feeling. Yeah. All right, so Nathan cracks the evolving wilds for an island, and now taps four for a huntmaster of the fells. Huntmaster of the fells, and Ken has a response in the form of dissipate. Yep, dissipate pretty good there. Alright, so I think that time he attacked for one. Or yeah. Moreland Haunt for Ken. Passes back. No stone horns. Chooses horn not to just stick a rhino. Yeah, I think that's that's good. There's not too scary at this point, uh
Yep. Huh. So Flash is in a Restoration Angel, and that's something that's really good about Restoration Angels. You can just get free creatures with it. Yeah, it's like a removal spell. So yeah, Ken flashes in Restoration Angel, blocks one of Ken's attacking La uh, Llanowar Elves, and, uh, and now is on the attack with the Angel himself. Nathan with four lands, Bird of Paradise, and a Llanowar Elf in play. And he taps all four lands and the bird for a Tamio the Moon Sage. Oh, and Ken has Snapcaster for the Dissipate. I wanted to see that Tamio. That's pretty good. Yeah, so Tamio now countered. And Nathan, uh, Nathan attacks with a land oil. Ken now untapped, plays a land in with the Angel and the Snapcaster. Yeah, and I mean, here he could, if he wants to, just uh, Restoration Angel, that Snapcaster, and uh, get a free card out of this. Looks so. like that's exactly what he's doing. So Restoration Angel blinks the Snapcaster Mage, gets a uh, Getaxian Probe flashback, and we saw Snapcaster, and what was the other card that was in Nathan's hand? Oh, uh, I didn't catch it. All right, so now uh, Nathan on his back foot here. Strangeroot guys, you know, he's trying to keep up, but two, three, four flyings in the air is just really hard to deal with. And this is the thing about this blink deck is, you know, you end up keeping these hands where you're just like, okay, well, this hand can't lose the Stonehorn Dignitary Lock. And sometimes <laughs> he'll just beat you with flyers. Yeah, this is just like blue-white skies, you know? <laughs> just like, yeah. Blue white control. Counter your spells and attack you with flyers. So yeah, I mean like. he's been in now for three, then five, that's twelve, then six is six. So Nathan Lisko down to six life right now. Yeah, we're having another uh, connection issue with the judge, uh, the table judge. So we don't have accurate life totals. Looks like we're just going by what we uh, what we think. So. And a ponder from Kenborough. Let's see what he can find with that. That's right. He. Uh, Puts timely reinforcements on the top of his deck. Oh, Blade Splicer. Blade That's actually splicer much better. Yeah. yeah. That's quite funny that he has the LSV tokens and he looks exactly like LSV. That is kind of funny. <laughs> and, and that's yeah. it. Nathan scoops him up to LSV and Ken Burrell. Yeah. Ken Burrell able to take it down with his Venser Blink deck. That's awesome. I, I want to see that deck later. You so know, I, yeah. I. I would like to see that see that go far. I like Nathan's list too. So, uh, you know, I like the 